So Sarah's going to talk about this. Sarah's an Aurora's group at uh, Manchester and been doing lots of lovely research into solvate formation and molecular conformations. Over to you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, so, yes, I'm in my final year of my PhD at the University of Manchester, and today I'm going to talk to you about um, how solvate formation impacts molecular conformation. Um, Um, solvates are um, multi-component crystals which contain at least one solvent molecule and their incorporation into the solvent, the incorporation of a solvent into the crystal may influence the physical properties of the crystal. Um, and Exitinib is an example of a highly solvating API with 66 solvates. So molecular confirmation molecule and this is often described in terms of rotated ones or torsion angles and this can also influence the physical properties of the crystal structure. Um, so here uh, I have the example of orthoacetamidabenzamide and you can see that there's differences around these two uh, rotatable bonds here. Um, and so an example where um, Confirmation and solvates have been studied together is uh, Pat Basford's recent uh, work on the impact of confirmation on the hydration and dehydration mechanisms of fluconazole. And Pat found that the fastest hydration kinetics were observed from the anhydrous forms, um, which are confirmationally similar to the monohydrate, so the anhydrous A and anhydrous C. Um, and upon heating of the monohydrate, um, there's a conformational change of the hydroxy group, um, which weakens the interactions with water and promotes interactions between the fluconazole molecules. Um, and the fluconazole monohydrate also dehydrates anhydrous C, which is conformationally similar um, to the monohydrate. Um, so in this work, we wanted to be able to answer some questions. Um, so how often uh, does conformational change occur between solvate in neat structures and is the less stable conformer more likely to crystallize in a solvate structure and how large are these conformational energy differences. So starting with the CSD 2020 best R factor subset which has just over half a million structures we then use the CSD Python API to search for organic structures which contain two components where one of the components is a solvent in the CSD solvent library. And this gives us just over 20,000 structures. Um, and then we filter this for the 10 most common solvates, um, which accounts for 84% of our organic solvates. So using the CSD Python API, uh, we search for the main component of the solvate to find neat structures with that component. So for this top example, um, we searched for this molecule and we weren't able to find a neat structure of that molecule. So there is, it doesn't have a Sony pair. Um, and for this example of the uh, morphine monohydrate, we found that a, um, yeah, so sorry, uh, for the morphine monohydrate, we found a neat structure of morphine and so therefore it has a solvate neat pair, um, which I'll refer to as a Sony pair going forward. Um, so of the, my structures from our most common solvates, um, 1,518 of these have a Sony pair. Um, and so on average, 9% of solvates form a neat form. And this can vary significantly between the different solvate types. Um, so we tend to see lower percentages for polar protic and chlorinated solvents compared to non-polar and uh, polar protic solvents. So we are interested in conformational change, uh, which can be identified by obtaining a potential energy surface of the molecule. And uh, conformation is related by conformational change um, would need to go over a potential energy barrier. And Aurora, Cruz, Kvez and Joel Bernstein derived a structural approximation for um, conformational change where if the RMSD of the molecular overlay of two molecules is greater than uh, 0.375 angstrom, then they are likely to be related by conformational change. So 
So for the top example, I return back to the morphine example, and you can see that the molecular overlay of these two um, structures are very similar, so they're not conformational. Um, whereas if you look at the example below, um, you can see that there are some differences in the molecular overlay, particularly around these two highlight highlighted rotatable bonds. Um, so therefore, this is a conformational Sony pair. And so we found that just under half of our Sony pairs had a different structure, um, which was had a neat structure, which was conformationally different to the solvate. Um, and this varies across the different solvent types, but there doesn't appear to be any solvent related trend here. Um, so I'm now going to compare uh, the trends found in conformational Sony pairs to those observed by Aurora, Cruz Cabeza and Joel Bernstein in their in conformational polymorphs. And so we want to find out whether conformational Sony pairs are more flexible than non-conformational Sony pairs and how large these conformational energy differences are. Um, so firstly, looking at um, the impact of flexibility. Um, so we describe this using a term called the degree of flexibility and this takes into account the number of acyclic bonds, um, the number of non-aromatic cyclic groups and the number of triple bonds. And we can see here that as the degree of flexibility increases um, in our hydrates, that they are more likely to be uh, conformational Sony pairs. Um, and this um, trend is observed across many of our solvate structures, our, uh, our solvate types, and is also very comparable to the observations found for conformational polymorphs. Um, so then are less stable conformers more likely in the solvate? So if a solvate conformer is more stable, then it's lower in energy than the neat conformer. Um, and we've got that they're similarly stable if they're within 2.5 kilojoules per mole of each other. And then the neat conformer is more stable when it's lower in energy than the solvate. And so here we... Um, find that the majority of the time our conformers are similarly stable and um, when the solvate or the neat conformer is found to be more stable there doesn't seem to be any preference as to which structure the most stable conformers found in. Um, and so then looking at how large these conformational energy differences um, large energy differences are possible so uh, more than 20 kilojoules per mole uh, but the ma majority of conformations are quite similar in energy, so they're often kind of in this um, 0 to 5 kilojoules per mole um, area. So we've then looked at a few examples in more detail, and each of these have uh, different conformations in their solvated and neat forms, and they're often accompanied by large differences in conformational stability. Um, so we found that... Uh, depending on the system, the use of solvents in uh, conformer energy calculations can significantly alter the relative stabilities of the conformers. Um, so both of these examples, we see that the conformers become much closer in energy when uh, using polar protic solvents rather than non-polar solvents. Um, so here you can see all the conformers are within 20 kilojoules per mole rather than being within 30 kilojoules per mole here. Um, and even in this top example, you can see that the um, relative ranking of these top higher energy conformers swaps over. Um, so here you can see uh, the impact of methanol as the solvent across all our example systems. And so in most cases, the relative energies are lower uh, when compared to the gas phase. So they're all below um, this black line, really, apart from that one. Um, and we've also found that the addition of thermal free energy corrections, so this was at 25 degrees C, um, the energies can be stabilised further. So particularly in the examples of Ifalal and JCs, um, that both observe a re-ranking of their conformers and are much more accessible than without the solvent and thermal effects being accounted for. Um, so... In this work, we found that just under half of our um, Sony pairs are conformational, um, and the majority of 
uh, conformation or Sony pairs were similar in energy with no trend as to which structure the most stable conformer is likely to crystallize in. Um, and also found that um, these energy differences can be quite large, but they're quite rare, um, with the majority of the energy differences being quite small. Um, and we've observed that previously high energy conformers can become much more accessible when uh, solvent and thermal effects are accounted for. Um, so I'd like to thank my supervisors, Aurora and Roger, and the rest of my research group, Manchester, and then um, Jason at CCDC and CCDC and EPSRC for uh, sponsoring my research. Thank you.